The Channel Islands are an archipelago in the English Channel, off the French coast of Normandy. They include two crown dependencies, the Bailiwick of Jersey, which is the largest of the islands, and the Bailiwick of Guernsey, consisting of Guernsey, Alderney, Sark, Herm and some smaller islands. They are considered the remnants of the Duchy of Normandy and, although they are not part of the United Kingdom, the UK is responsible for the defence and international relations of the islands. The Crown Dependencies are not members of the Commonwealth of Nations, nor have they ever been in the European Union. They have a total population of about 170,499, and the Bailiwick's capitals, St. Helier and St. Peter Port, have populations of 33,500 and 18,207, respectively. Channel Islands is a geographical term, not a political unit. The two bailiwicks have been administered separately since the late 13th century. Each has its own independent laws, elections, and representative bodies. Any institution common to both is the exception rather than the rule. The bailiwick of Guernsey is divided into three jurisdictions, Guernsey, Alderney and Sark, each with its own legislature. Although there are a few pan-island institutions, these tended to be established structurally as equal projects between Guernsey and Jersey. Otherwise, entities proclaiming membership of both Guernsey and Jersey might in fact be from one bailiwick only. For instance, the Channel Islands Securities Exchange is in St. Peter Port and therefore is in Guernsey. The term Channel Islands began to be used around 1830, possibly first by the Royal Navy as a collective name for the islands. The term refers only to the archipelago to the west of the Cotentin Peninsula. Other populated islands located in the English Channel, such as the Isle of Wight, Hailing Island, and Portsea Island, are not regarded as Channel Islands. The Channel Islands and adjacent coast of France the two major islands are Jersey and Guernsey. They make up 99% of the population and 92% of the area. Aerial view of Sark Aerial view of Guernsey The names of the larger islands in the archipelago in general have the A suffix, whilst those of the smaller ones have the Ho suffix. These are believed to be from the Old Norse A and Holmer. The Shosey Islands south of Jersey are not generally included in the geographical definition of the Channel Islands but are occasionally described in English as French Channel Islands in view of their French jurisdiction. They were historically linked to the Duchy of Normandy, but they are part of the French territory along with continental Normandy, and not part of the British Isles or of the Channel Islands in a political sense. They are an incorporated part of the Commune of Granville. While they are popular with visitors from France, Channel Islanders can only visit them by private or charter boats as there are no direct transport links from the other islands. In official Jersey Standard French, the Channel Islands are called Ile de la Manche, while in France, the term Ile Anglo-Normande is used to refer to the British Channel Islands in contrast to other islands in the Channel. Chosy is referred to as an Ile Normande. Ile Normande and Archipel Normand have also, historically, been used in Channel Island French to refer to the islands as a whole. The very large tidal variation provides an environmentally rich intertidal zone around the islands, and some islands such as Buru, the Ecri House, and the Minkweers have been designated Ramsar sites. The waters around the islands include the following, the highest point in the islands is Les Platons in Jersey at 143 meters above sea level. The lowest point is the English Channel. La Grandmere du Conquier, Statue men here, St. Martin, Guernsey The earliest evidence of human occupation of the Channel Islands has been dated to 250,000 years ago when they were attached to the landmass of continental Europe. The islands became detached by rising sea levels in the Neolithic period. The numerous dolmens and other archaeological sites extant and recorded in history demonstrate the existence of a population large enough and organized enough to undertake constructions of considerable size and sophistication such as the burial mound at La Haugby in Jersey or the statue menors of Guernsey. Hordes of Armorican coins have been excavated, providing evidence of trade and contact in the Iron Age period. Evidence for Roman settlement is sparse, although evidently the islands were visited by Roman officials and traders. The Roman name for the Channel Islands was Ilenuri and is included in the Pudinger table the traditional Latin names used. For the islands derived from the Antonine itinerary. Gallo-Roman culture was adopted to an unknown extent in the islands. In the 6th century, Christian missionaries visited the islands. Samson of Dole, Hellier, Markulf and Magloire are among saints associated with the islands. In the 6th century, 
they were already included in the Diocese of Coutades where they remained until the Reformation. There were probably some Celtic Britons who settled on the islands in the 5th and 6th centuries AD, the indigenous Celts of Great Britain, and the ancestors of the modern Welsh, Cornish, and Bretons, who had emigrated from Great Britain in the face of invading Anglo-Saxons. But there were not enough of them to leave any trace, and the islands continued to be ruled by the King of the Franks and its church remained part of the Diocese of Coutances. From the beginning of the 9th century, Norse raiders appeared on the coasts. Norse settlement eventually succeeded initial attacks, and it is from this period that many place names of Norse origin appear, including the modern names of the islands. In 933, the islands were granted to William I Longsword by Raoul King of Western Francia and annexed to the Duchy of Normandy. In 1066, William II of Normandy invaded and conquered England, becoming William I of England, also known as William the Conqueror. In the period 1204-1214, King John lost the Angevin lands in northern France, including mainland Normandy, to King Philip II of France but managed to retain control of the Channel Islands. In 1259, his successor, Henry III of England, by the Treaty of Paris, officially surrendered his claim and title to the Duchy of Normandy, while the King of France gave up claim to the Channel Islands which was based upon his position as feudal overlord of the Duke of Normandy. Since then, the Channel Islands have been governed as possessions of the crown and were never absorbed into the Kingdom of England and its successor kingdoms of Great Britain and the United Kingdom. The islands were invaded by the French in 1338, who held some territory until 1345. Edward III of England granted a charter in July 1341 to Jersey, Guernsey, Sark, and Alderney, confirming their customs and laws to secure allegiance to the English crown. Owain Logoc, a mercenary leader of a free company in the service of the French crown, attacked Jersey and Guernsey in 1372, and in 1373 Bertrand du Guesclin besieged mont -Orgui. The young King Richard II of England reconfirmed in 1378 the charter rights granted by his grandfather, followed in 1394 with a second charter granting. Because of great loyalty shown to the crown, exemption forever, from English tolls, customs and duties. Jersey was occupied by the French in 1461 as part of an exchange of helping the Lancastrians fight against the Yorkists during the War of the Roses. It was retaken by the Yorkists in 1468. In 1483 a papal bull decreed that the islands would be neutral during time of war. This privilege of neutrality enabled islanders to trade with both France and England and was respected until 1689, when it was abolished by order and council following the Glorious Revolution in Great Britain. Various attempts to transfer the islands from the Diocese of Coutances, Salisbury, and Winchester, had little effect until an order and council of 1569 brought the islands formally into the Diocese of Winchester. Control by the Bishop of Winchester was ineffectual as the islands had turned overwhelmingly Calvinist and the episcopacy was not restored until 1620 in Jersey and 1663 in Guernsey. Sark in the 16th century was uninhabited until colonized from Jersey in the 1560s. The grant of St. Urship from Elizabeth I of England in 1565 forms the basis of Sark's constitution today. During the Wars of the Three Kingdoms, Jersey held out strongly for the royalist cause, providing refuge for Charles, Prince of Wales in 1646 and 1649 to 1650, while the more strongly Presbyterian Guernsey more generally favoured the parliamentary cause. The islands acquired commercial and political interests in the North American colonies. Islanders became involved with the Newfoundland fisheries in the 17th century. In recognition for all the help given to him during his exile in Jersey in the 1640s, Charles II gave George Carteret, bailiff and governor, a large grant of land in the American colonies, which he promptly named New Jersey, now part of the United States of America. Sir Edmund Andros of Guernsey was an early colonial governor in North America, and head of the short-lived Dominion of New England. In the late 18th century, the islands were dubbed the French Isles. Wealthy French émigrés fleeing the revolution sought residency in the islands. Many of the town domiciles existing today were built in that time. In St. Peter Port, a large part of the harbour had been built by 1865. German fortifications, built during the Second World War, are presently scattered throughout the landscape of the Channel Islands World War II during the German occupation of Jersey. A stonemason repairing the paving of the Royal Square incorporated a V for victory under the noses of the occupiers. 
This was later amended to refer to the Red Cross ship Vega. The addition of the date 1945 and a more recent frame has transformed it into a monument. The islands were the only part of the British Isles to be occupied by the German army during World War II. The British government demilitarized the islands in June 1940, and the lieutenant governors were withdrawn on 21st of June. Leaving the insular administrations to continue government as best they could under impending military occupation. Before German troops landed, between 30 June and July 4, 1940, evacuation took place. Many young men had already left to join the Allied Armed Forces, as volunteers. 6,600 out of 50,000 left Jersey while 17,000 out of 42,000 left Guernsey. Thousands of children were evacuated with their schools to England and Scotland. Crowds cheer as the Channel Islands are liberated at St. Peter Port in 1945 the population of Sark largely remained where they were, but in Alderney, all but six people left. In Alderney, the occupying Germans built four camps in which over 700 people out of a total worker population of about 6,000 died. Due to the destruction of documents, it is impossible to state how many forced workers died in the other islands. Alderney had the only Nazi concentration camps on British soil. The Royal Navy blockaded the islands from time to time, particularly following the invasion of Normandy in June 1944. There was considerable hunger and privation during the five years of German occupation, particularly in the final months when the population was close to starvation. Intense negotiations resulted in some humanitarian aid being sent via the Red Cross, leading to the arrival of Red Cross parcels in the supply ship SS Vega in December 1944. The German occupation of 1940-45 was harsh, over 2,000 islanders were deported by the Germans, some Jews were sent to concentration camps, partisan resistance and retribution, accusations of collaboration, and slave labor also occurred. Many Spaniards, initially refugees from the Spanish Civil War, were brought to the islands to build fortifications. Later, Russians and Central Europeans continued the work. Many landmines were laid, with 65,718 landmines laid in Jersey alone. There was no resistance movement in the Channel Islands on the scale of that in mainland France. This has been ascribed to a range of factors including the physical separation of the islands, the density of troops, the small size of the islands precluding any hiding places for resistance groups, and the absence of the Gestapo from the occupying forces. Moreover, much of the population of military age had joined the British Army already. The end of the occupation came after Vey Day on May 8, 1945, Jersey and Guernsey being liberated on 9 May. The German garrison in Alderney was left until 16 May, and it was one of the last of the Nazi German remnants to surrender. The first evacuees returned on the first sailing from Great Britain on 23 of June, but the people of Alderney were unable to start returning until December 1945. Many of the evacuees who returned home had difficulty reconnecting with their families after five years of separation. Post-1945 following the liberation of 1945, reconstruction led to a transformation of the economies of the islands, attracting immigration and developing tourism. The legislatures were reformed and non-party governments embarked on social programs, aided by the incomes from offshore finance, which grew rapidly from the 1960s. The islands decided not to join the European Economic Community when the UK joined, and remained outside. Since the 1990s, declining profitability of agriculture and tourism has challenged the governments of the islands. The Channel Islands fall into two separate self-governing bailiwicks, the Bailiwick of Guernsey and the Bailiwick of Jersey. Both are British Crown dependencies, and neither is a part of the United Kingdom. They have been parts of the Duchy of Normandy since the 10th century, and Queen Elizabeth II is often referred to by her traditional and conventional title of Duke of Normandy. However, pursuant to the Treaty of Paris, she governs in her right as the Queen, and not as the Duke. This notwithstanding, it is a matter of local pride for monarchists to treat the situation otherwise, the loyal toast at formal dinners is to the Queen. Our Duke, rather than to Her Majesty, the Queen is in the UK. A bailiwick is a territory administered by a bailiff. Although the words derive from a common root there is a vast difference between the meanings of the word bailiff in Great Britain and in the Channel Islands, a bailiff in Britain is a court-appointed private debt collector authorized to collect judgment debts. In the Channel Islands, the bailiff in each bailiwick is the civil head, presiding officer of the states, and also head of the judiciary, and thus the most important citizen in the bailiwick. 
In the early 21st century, the existence of governmental offices such as the bailiffs with multiple roles straddling the different branches of government came under increased scrutiny for their apparent contravention of the doctrine of separation of powers, most notably in the Guernsey case of McGonnell v. United Kingdom 30 EHRR 289. That case, following final judgment at the European Court of Human Rights, became part of the impetus for much recent constitutional change, particularly the Constitutional Reform Act 2005 in the UK. Including the separation of the roles of the Lord Chancellor, the abolition of the House of Lords judicial role, and its replacement by the UK Supreme Court. The island's bailiffs, however, still retain their historic roles. The systems of government in the islands date from Norman times, which accounts for the names of the legislatures, the states, derived from the Norman Eta or estates. The states have evolved over the centuries into democratic parliaments. Entrance to the public gallery of the state's chamber in Jersey the UK Parliament has power to legislate for the islands, but acts of Parliament do not extend to the islands automatically. Usually, an act gives power to extend its application to the islands by an order in council, after consultation. For the most part the islands legislate for themselves. Each island has its own primary legislature, known as the states of Guernsey and the states of Jersey, with chief pleas in Sark and the states of Alderney. The Channel Islands are not represented in the UK Parliament. Laws passed by the states are given royal assent by the Queen and Council, to whom the island's governments are responsible. The islands have never been part of the European Union, and thus were not a party to the 2016 referendum on the EU membership, but were part of the customs territory of the European community by virtue of Protocol 3 to the Treaty on European Union. In September 2010, a Channel Islands Brussels office was set up jointly by the two bailiwicks to develop the Channel Islands' influence with the EU, to advise the Channel Islands' governments on European matters, and to promote economic links with the EU. Both bailiwicks are members of the British Irish Council, and Jerais and Guernseys are recognized regional languages of the islands. The legal courts are separate, separate courts of appeal have been in place since 1961. Among the legal heritage from Norman law is the clamor de Harrow. The basis of the legal systems of both bailiwicks is Norman customary law rather than the English common law, although elements of the latter have become established over time. Islanders are full British citizens, but were not classed as European citizens unless by descent from a UK national. Any British citizen who applies for a passport in Jersey or Guernsey receives a passport bearing the words British Islands, bailiwick of Jersey or British Islands, bailiwick of Guernsey. Under the provisions of Protocol 3, Channel Islanders who do not have a close connection with the UK, no parent or grandparent from the UK, and have never been resident in the UK for a five-year period, did not automatically benefit from the EU provisions on free movement within the EU. And their passports received an endorsement to that effect. This affected only a minority of Islanders. Under the UK Interpretation Act 1978, the Channel Islands are deemed to be part of the British Islands, not to be confused with the British Isles. For the purposes of the British Nationality Act 1981, the British Islands include the United Kingdom, the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man, taken together, unless the context otherwise requires. Tourism is still important. However, Jersey and Guernsey have, since the 1960s, become major offshore financial centres. Historically Guernsey's horticultural and greenhouse activities have been more significant than in Jersey, and Guernsey has maintained light industry as a higher proportion of its economy than Jersey. In Jersey, potatoes are an important export crop, shipped mostly to the UK. Jersey is heavily reliant on financial services, with 39.4% of gross value added in 2018 contributed by the sector. Rental income comes second at 15.1% with other business activities at 11. 2%. Tourism 4. 5% with agriculture contributing just 1. 2% and manufacturing even lower at 1. 1%. GVA has fluctuated between 4 pounds. 5 and 5 billion pounds for 20 years. Jersey has had a steadily rising population, increasing from below 90,000 in 2000 to over 105,000 in 2018 which combined with a flat GVA has resulted in GVA per head of population falling from £57,000 to £44,000 per person. Guernsey had a GDP of £3. 
2 billion in 2018 and with a stable population of around 66,000 has had a steadily rising GDP and a GVA per head of population which in 2018 surpassed 52,000 pounds. Both bailiwicks issue their own banknotes and coins, which circulate freely in all the islands alongside UK coinage and Bank of England and Scottish banknotes. Since 1969, Jersey and Guernsey have operated postal administrations independently of the UK's Royal Mail, with their own postage stamps, which can be used for postage only in their respective bailiwicks. UK stamps are no longer valid, but mail to the islands and to the Isle of Man is charged at UK inland rates. It was not until the early 1990s that the islands joined the UK's postcode system, Jersey postcodes using the initials J and Guernsey G. Rode each of the three largest islands as a distinct vehicle registration scheme, in Sark. Where most motor traffic is prohibited, the few vehicles, nearly all tractors, do not display plates. Bicycles display tax discs. See in the 1960s, names used for the cross-channel ferries plying the mail route between the islands and Weymouth, Dorset, were taken from the popular Latin names for the islands, Caesarea, Sarnia and Reduna. Fifty years later, the ferry route between the Channel Islands and the UK is operated by Condor ferries from both St. Helier, Jersey, and St. Peter Port, Guernsey, using high-speed catamaran fast craft to pool in the UK. A regular passenger ferry service on the Commodore Clipper goes from both Channel Island ports to Portsmouth daily and carries both passengers and freight. Ferry services to Normandy are operated by Monchiel Express, and services between Jersey and saint Malo are operated by Compagnie Corsair and Condor Ferries. The Isle of Sark Shipping Company operates small ferries to Sark. On August 20, 2013, Hewland Renouf, which had operated a lift-on liftoff container service for 80 years between the port of Southampton and the port of Jersey, ceased trading. Senator Alan McLean, a Jersey politician, had previously tried to save the 90-odd jobs furnished by the company to no avail. On 20th of September, it was announced that Channel Island Lines would continue this service, and would purchase the MV Hewland dispatch from associated British ports who in turn had purchased them from the receiver in the bankruptcy. The new operator was to be funded by Rockane Limited, a closely held association of Jersey business people. ATR 42500 of Origny Air Services Air There are three airports in the Channel Islands, Alderney Airport, Guernsey Airport, and Jersey Airport, which are directly connected to each other by services operated by Blue Islands and Origny. Rail Historically there have been railway networks on Jersey, Guernsey, and Alderney, but all of the lines on Jersey and Guernsey have been closed and dismantled. Today there are three working railways in the Channel Islands, of which the Alderney Railway is the only one providing a regular timetabled passenger service. The other two are a 7 plus 1 quarter engage miniature railway, also on Alderney, and the Heritage Steam Railway operated on Jersey as part of the Palo Heritage Steam Museum. The Channel Islands are served by a number of local radio services, BBC Radio Jersey and Radio Guernsey, Channel 103 and Island FM, as well as regional television news opt-outs from BBC Channel Islands and ITV Channel Television. On August 1, 2021, DAB Plus Digital Radio became available for the first time, introducing new stations like the local Bailiwick Radio and Soleil Radio and UK-wide services like Capital, Heart and Times Radio. There are two broadcast transmitters serving Jersey, at Fremont Point and Leigh Platens, as well as one at Leigh Toilets in Guernsey and a relay in Alderney. There are several local newspapers including the Guernsey Press and the Jersey Evening Post and magazines. Jersey always operated its own telephone services independently of Britain's national system, Guernsey established its own telephone service in 1968. Both islands still form part of the British telephone numbering plan, but Ofcom on the main lines does not have responsibility for telecommunications regulatory and licensing issues on the islands. It is responsible for wireless telegraphy licensing throughout the islands, and by agreement, for broadcasting regulation in the two large islands only. Submarine cables connect the various islands and provide connectivity with England and France. Modern broadband speeds are available in all the islands, including full fiber in Jersey and BDSL and some business fiber connectivity in Guernsey. Providers include Sure and JT. The two bailiwicks each have their own internet domain. GG and J, which are managed by Channelists. Net. A sea festival advertised using Jernizier's the Norman language predominated in the islands until the 19th century, 
when increasing influence from English-speaking settlers and easier transport links led to anglicization. There are four main dialects-slash-languages of Norman in the islands, Orinese, Gernesiese, Gerais and Cirquies. Victor Hugo spent many years in exile, first in Jersey and then in Guernsey, where he finished Les Miserables. Guernsey is the setting of Hugo's later novel Les Travailleurs de la Mer. A Guernsey man also makes an appearance in Chapter 91 of Herman Melville's Moby Dick. The annual Marathi, the inter island football match, is considered the sporting event of the year, although, due to broadcast coverage. It no longer attracts the crowds of spectators, traveling between the islands, that it did during the 20th century. Cricket is popular in the Channel Islands. The Jersey cricket team and the Guernsey cricket team are both associate members of the International Cricket Council. The teams have played each other in the inter-insular match since 1957. In 2001 and 2002, the Channel Islands entered a team into the MCCA Knockout Trophy, the one-day tournament of the minor counties of English and Welsh cricket. Channel Island sportsmen and women compete in the Commonwealth Games for their respective islands and the islands have also been enthusiastic supporters of the island games. Shooting is a popular sport, in which islanders have won Commonwealth medals. Guernsey's traditional color for sporting and other purposes is green and jerseys is red. This statue of a crapo in St. Helier represents the traditional nickname for Jersey people. The main islanders have traditional animal nicknames. Christianity was brought to the islands around the 6th century, according to tradition. Jersey was evangelized by St. Helier, Guernsey by St. Samson of Dole, and the smaller islands were occupied at various times by monastic communities representing strands of Celtic Christianity. At the Reformation, the previously Roman Catholic islands converted to Calvinism under the influence of an influx of French-language pamphlets published in Geneva. Anglicanism was imposed in the 17th century, but the nonconformist local tendency returned with a strong adoption of Methodism. In the late 20th century, a strong Roman Catholic presence re-emerged with the arrival of numerous Portuguese workers. Their numbers have been reinforced by recent migrants from Poland and elsewhere in Eastern Europe. Today, evangelical churches have been established. Services are held in a number of languages. According to 2015 statistics, 39% of the population was non-religious. A number of islands in the English Channel are part of France. Among these are Brea, Ile de Bats, Chosy, Tatijo and the Ile saint Marcouf. The Isle of Wight, which is part of England, lies just off the coast of Great Britain, between the Channel and the Solent. Channel Islands at Wikipedia Sister Projects. Thanks for watching.